this hangout on air is live all right that's what it says and when it says that that means that we are here with the hashtag vo podcast my name is dan simpson you can find me on twitter at i dan simpson vo today my guest is jeff clement he's on uh twitter at aural stimulate is that correct jeff is that right that's correct but it's uh it's you got to get the right kind of oral um uh, a u r a l that's right Aural. Yeah. I, I guess you could pronounce it that way sure very good <laughs> well thank you jeff thank you for being here i just want to let you know that i appreciate you being here um, i'm going to say that at least 100 times during this interview but that just means that i really i really appreciate you spending your time with me and sharing all of your best ideas with me and your best strategies for uh you know getting your feet wet in the vo world uh gaining some traction and uh and and really just getting it going so i just want to thank you again for your for being here um and i just want to let you go ahead and say hi to the people so so go ahead and say hi to the people listen to the podcast hello people um yes hi i'm jeff clement i'm a uh voice actor and a producer and a musician and ten thousand other things and uh, i'm very happy to be here today so thanks very much for having me dan thank you for being here um i didn't know you were a musician jeff i'm gonna have to ask you about that in a little bit but let's go ahead and introduce jeff a little bit more jeff again you're on twitter at aural stimulate um you're gonna be providing a really interesting per perspective today because you're part voice artist and your part producer aka a sound designer a sound mixer your composer and uh, and producer you also uh produce um uh, for your youtube channel and i think if i'm not getting this wrong there was there's a collection of videos called the chilling tales for dark nights and you also uh, do voice acting for a podcast call called the no sleep podcast am i getting those things right you are correct. Yes. So I've got my own YouTube channel. <laughs> um, my own YouTube channel is called Oral Stimulation. Um, it's a basically an online kind of um, portfolio of sorts um, where I do uh, dramatic readings of short stories. I do monologues. Uh, I do cover songs, uh, uh, original music. Um, I like to dabble a lot in the horror genre, as you'll hear as <laughs> me talk a lot about that, because um, it's fun. You get to play all kinds of different roles. Uh, um, and I also work as an executive producer with Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, which is another YouTube channel. And they specialize in, obviously, scary stories um, with full production values and, and everything like that. And then... Uh, I'm a producer and voice actor as well with the No Sleep podcast run by showrunner David Cummings, who actually lives here in Ontario. Um, and that's actually fast becoming one of the more popular podcasts around. Um, and it's, again, uh, lots of horror. And uh, and each of those two, uh, that channel, Chilling Tales, as well as the No Sleep podcast, the whole crux is that there, um, there's a there's a cast of voice actors uh who work with both uh, both projects and then each um story is produced by a producer and then there's also usually a musician involved and an artist and things like that so we try to with both of those projects we try to put the maximum amount of production value into everything we do and um and try to keep it above uh, a way, you know, not just a dry audiobook kind of interpretation of a story, but we go with music and sound effects and and everything. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and uh, and I got to wear many many different hats. <laughs> Too many, probably, but it's uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Jeff Clement, Hat Man from <laughs> Ontario, Canada, uh, and and thank you by the way for for meeting me all the way from ontario canada i'm i'm sure the journey was hard but thank you for meeting me again tonight um so you do you say you do a lot of horror readings but your voice doesn't sound scary i'm not scared at all jeff what's the deal <laughs> um yeah i mean i'm not gonna lie i'm i'm pretty much a dork at heart um <laughs> <laughs> but i like to uh i like to put a lot of uh emotion and drama into my readings um when i'm just you know shooting the breeze like this i just sound like a dork but uh I, you know i try to 
I try to to do what I can to change my voice based on the character or the role or if I'm playing a monster or something like that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how hugely flexible my range is. And I often get comments about having a, a Canadian accent, um, no matter what, what kind of character I'm trying to play. And unfortunately, oh that gosh. just peeks through. Um, do, do your monsters you also apologize? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I may not have quite the dynamic range as as some of my professional voice acting friends, but mm. uh, then again, I'm not a professional voice actor, and I don't do this uh, for a living. Um, actually, this is my passion project. Um, I mm. love to turn it into my living. Um, so I'm just any chance that I get to try something new uh i'll I'll try it and i i like to step outside of my comfort zone when i can and uh and i either succeed or i fall flat on my face but uh, that's what it's all about yeah i think that's why they that's why (laughs) that's why they call it art um um well that's that sounds really cool so it sounds like you really get into the different character voices and uh and that's sort of the route that you take you uh, do you you also do narration is that right if i'm not mistaken you do sort of more narration type things would you say you maybe use your more natural voice your more natural uh conversational voice for those yeah it's it's closer to my natural voice um it's kind of hyper real (laughs) or it's kind of like one step removed from my natural voice but I do try to sound, I do want it to sound natural. And I, and I try to make the way that I approach my narrations. Cause I, a lot of the stories that I do are in the first person. Um, and I find it feels a lot more natural when you use those natural cadences. And, and if you actually slip up a little bit, mm. um, not actually mispronounce things, but just, um, just in the way that you take your pauses and things like that. Uh, yeah, so uh, the majority of, of voice act voice acting work that I do is narrating stories. Um, <clears throat> and I know that there's different ways of narrating stories. There's, uh, there's a very, your very kind of clinical audiobook style, um, depending on the audiobook. Um, sure. And, uh, and I try to not do that because the stories that I read are all about kind of horrible things happening to good people and... <laughs> And things like that. Um, so I like to to try to make it dramatic. So if it's if something scary is happening, even if I'm narrating in the third person, I try to uh, to to kind of make my voice reflect the kind of tenseness of the situation and things like that, so that I kind of draw the reader in, uh, the listener in that way. Um, I really want to. I don't necessarily want to place emotions on the reader, but I want to kind of help guide guide them through that. So you mentioned that um, that this was a passion project. Is that right? Which which project specifically? Uh, well, everything I do basically. So I work I work a full time job that is not this at all. Um, wow, what do you do? It's, it's a nine to five job doing yes. web development. For, yes. yes, it's uh, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> hey, we got to make it happen, baby. I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it pays the bills. Uh, you know, it pays well and yes. everything. And uh, good. Yeah. I've been working on that career for the last, you know, decade. Um, and, but I've always had this on the side, just kind yeah. of in the background. And there, there, there came a time about um, three years ago when I sat down and I looked at the various kind of bits of equipment that I had. And I thought, I wonder if I just connect this to this thing and try <laughs> recording myself. Like your audio. <laughs> your audio Can I actually? Yeah, can I actually try this? Because I had seen that, um, you know, I, I I go on YouTube like most people when they're bored, and I had yeah. come across a couple of, uh, of of YouTube channels that where people were doing readings of stories, and I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. I mean, like, yeah. you know, it's you don't really owe anything to anybody. You can just do it and put it out there and see what people think. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll give it a shot, you know, and I'll find some cheesy stories and I'll just see what I could do. And the first like ten never saw the light of day they're yeah. they're just sitting on my hard drive you never them. uploaded them no no the why firm, do you hate them so much <clears throat> um well there's a standard 
of quality that I try to achieve <laughs> and, uh, and they were nowhere near that, but that was me experimenting and kind of finding yeah. my legs and everything like that. Good. So yeah, the very first one that I, is, was that the, you just sort of had like musical equipment laying around and that's how you put together your little makeshift studio. Yeah. Makeshift studio. Yeah. 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 I had an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar and, a, um, and I had a USB interface, um, for yeah. my electric guitar <laughs> yeah and i was like oh i could totally just hook a mic into this thing and what so i went got in it. what's that i was i was just gonna ask what mic you used and i think you were oh, about to say was, sorry um, it was a sure sm sm58 exactly that's <laughs> like how your i started like your yeah you i mean like it's your standard microphone like, right exactly your standard that dynamic is, stage mic beta. That and thing, that's a great microphone, but you, you want to be singing yeah. into that on stage with, you know, monitors and the drums and everything behind you. you I oh, yeah. honestly, I did my first few voiceovers in the same exact way. You're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> well, it's a great mic. Um, and is. the thing is, if you if you enhance it in post, it sounds less and less like a stage mic and more and more like an actual professional microphone. And it is a professional grade sure. microphone. I mean, and that particular mic has this like long legacy because it used to belong to my my best friend's brother who was in a hip-hop band yes. and it's had like beer spilled on it and dropped on the stage and equipment fall on it and it was dented to crap you know when i got it and i i replaced the ball and filter and it sounded brand new and i was yeah. like well i'm not gonna go spend 300 dollars on a mic hmm. if i've got this thing here which is you know industry grade i'll just get an xlr patch and patch it in and we'll see what happens and and so i, I you know played around with my settings a lot and how close and far I was and whether to use a pop filter or not and things like mm -hmm. that. And then uh, eventually I got more into the production side of things and, and realized that I could actually really clean up and enhance the signal quite a bit um, in post. So, um, so the stuff that my earlier stuff from two years ago sounds quite good for what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And it's using the SM, SM58 um with some enhancements done in the uh in the dynamics and with the eq and things like that oh the old sm58 really cool um <laughs> i feel like you were maybe moving on to something else you were going to say something when i asked you about that microphone uh if not no i mean i was just getting to the point of uh just hugging all this crap together and trying it out and and really most people I talk to who do this, that's exactly how it starts out. It's just like, I wonder if I can do this because a lot of voice actors I know, be they amateur or professional, do it right out of their home studio. I don't know too many people who actually go into the studio to do it because, I mean, those aren't really the type of people who I work with, people who do professional commercials and things like that. Um, a lot of my professional voice actor friends do a lot of audiobooks and stuff like that. That. And you can just do that stuff from the comfort of your home, you know, and it doesn't cost a lot to have a home studio. Mm -hmm. So, and that's all how they all start out. They just wire a bunch of things together and see if they can do it on the cheap and, uh, and then improve as they go. Now I do want to ask you a little bit more about, I love how you called it a passion project. And that really just sort of, I, I bet there are a lot of folks out there who feel very similarly about voiceovers or maybe even about another creative endeavor um, where you have this nine to five job, you're paying the bills, you're doing a good job of that. That's not a worry, but um, you're looking at voiceovers as this creative outlet. It's this fun thing. It's, it's really fun. And I, I, and I really like talking to you because you, you have a different energy. I've talked to a handful of different professional voiceovers and, uh, and voiceover folks and, and uh, they, they continue to blow my mind every time I talk to these folks. Um, but you could tell they just they do this day in and day out and they have a certain feeling about it. But um, I don't know, there's this freshness to talking with you today and that's really cool. Um, so you have this passion project. What, like um, you, you say it was just this one day when you just decided to put it together. Was, was there any other impetus? Were you ever thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah, I would like to do this or, oh, you said you were watching those voiceover, uh, those videos. Is that right? Did you ever consider doing voice yeah, over, right. uh, voiceover before that? Um, no. Um, which is not to say that I didn't kind of secretly practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
you know, I can think back to when I was three years old, you know, and my mom and dad handed me a, a tape recorder and a microphone and I would spend hours and hours and hours recording myself just saying nonsense and uh, for fun. And, uh, and then like I got a little older and I had a friend and we had like a fake radio show and stuff like that. And, and I think back to then and I'm like, okay, I can kind of trace yeah. where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of played around with just doing different voices and stuff. That's always just been who I am. I like, I like kind of changing up my voice and, and doing impressions although I do them very, very poorly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just for fun, just trying on different accents and things like that for fun. And I talked to myself in the car and, and all that stuff. And I thought it all just kind of clicked one day where it was like, oh, well, I, I could record this. And if it's something that I'm happy with, I could, I have like a venue where I could just post this and see what people think. And so I struck up the nerve and, and did just that. And then you started your YouTube channel. And I started my YouTube channel. Yes, I guess that would be the segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and uh, and that was really just um, more of a, an experiment than anything else. Um, and, and the very first one that I posted um, was actually a full production because I, I made oh. the decision after I had done five or six or 10 of them um, that I, I wasn't going to do dry readings. Um, Here's here's the thing that really makes me excited about doing this. <clears throat> I've been, like I said, I've been working kind of professionally as a as a web developer for for many many years now. Um, on I went to to university. During my time there, I had the opportunity to work on a couple of student films, um, doing music. And, um, and I've always been really passionate about film. My brother's a filmmaker. He brought me in a couple of times on some different productions that he was doing as a musician. Um, and that kind of kept the, fil the film bug going. I, I went and taught myself how to do web design for fun. I taught myself graphic design, um, various different kind of skills that actually ended up translating into me getting into into school as a web developer and uh and then doing that professionally and and doing that professionally means that i'm doing several different things and a lot of it, it is is graphic design and working with different types of media and i found that um all these kind of various disparate skills that i've been accruing over the the many years um completely converged all together um, when I started the YouTube channel, because suddenly mm -hmm. I was doing a, I was doing voice acting, which was fun. I was doing production, which was really fun. I love doing production, sound mix and sound design and things like that. <clears throat> I was doing music, which I had already been doing for years before that. And and then I got, you know, to create a YouTube thumbnail, you need to have some graphic design talent. Um, and I got to flex my graphic design muscle and then getting onto social media and promoting myself and, and everything like that, which is all part of the web world in which I work. And it's like, I look back and it's like every single skill I have, I'm putting them to use doing it for my channel. And that's a really validating feeling because <laughs> I, I feel like I haven't just like wasted a bunch of learning. <laughs> I'm actually applying it all, all the time. And so I thought I would uh, extend that into working with other people eventually. And uh, so the my YouTube channel just kind of hummed along very, very quietly. Nobody really paid any attention to it. And uh, and I sent in on, a, on a, uh, an audition to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights with like full production because um, mm -hmm. I saw that they were doing something very similar to what I was doing. And um, and they were this owner, Craig Roshek, was really impressed by that because he usually just gets dry auditions all the time. Okay. And he's like, uh, when can we fold you into the team? <laughs> so I was like, oh, cool. And yeah, and from there, it just kind of started evolving and everything. And my, ch my channel picked up Steam, basically piggybacking off of Chilling Tales for Dark Nights because I started getting exposure and I'm very active in the comments and people see my username all the time and stuff like that. So 
yeah, so it's, uh, you know, I'm no celebrity, but it's still a lot of fun to do. And, and, and every once in a while, I come across a comment, you know, that makes me smile. And somebody says I'm their favorite narrator or whatever. Huh. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So it, it keeps the passion keeps going because it's constantly yeah. being kind of spring fed <laughs> by people online and everything like that. So, and my goal, my dream is to parlay it into something actually professional whether it's in voice acting or, or in production, I kind of feel almost like production might be the better way to go because it's not as saturated a market. Mm. Um, but then again, it kind of is. So I'm kind of damned if I do or damned if I don't. So I'd rather just do everything. Well, I really <laughs> like the way how you talked about, you know, this, I love how you say passion project. That really gets me. But I also love how you mentioned how it, um, is the convergence it's it's is how all of your creative skills sort of came together all in one project in one uh big thing that you were working on and um and I, I think there's a lot of excuse me there's a lot of people out there who probably uh resonate with that idea um you know because uh, mm -hmm. voice acting isn't just talking into the microphone it's the whole business it's it is uh, marketing yourself it's uh, connecting with people and the way in which you connect with people you know what does your business card look like what does your youtube channel look like you know do you have a logo for your youtube channel um when you upload videos do you upload custom thumbnails you know just all these little things the minutia of little things and some people uh, i think like me and like yourself we i don't know we sort of really enjoy the, uh, doing that and uh and um yeah and so I think that's that yeah, for sure. And I mean, I got to give it up. You got a yeah. great logo. It's a great logo. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I quite that like yours too. Cool. Thank you, sir. Did you make yours? It's incredible. I did. Yeah. It's, yeah. oh, it's just great. It gets, and it's actually perfect I, for I this little visualization with all the yes. going. Yeah. Big circle circles. is always good. <laughs> circles. Circles are good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, 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 uh, the name kind of, um, came to be and uh and i thought well it sounds kind of old timey and that's kind of fun mm -hmm. and i thought well old timey makes me think like old radio shows and what did you know what was the kind of branding at the time for old radio shows well it was radio raves kind of emanating from a thing and and I, it was just like it's kind of like a tone <laughs> not really a whole visual picture it's just the whole mm -hmm. idea of of like just this space where sound is happening and that's kind of the whole philosophy behind my channel is th that's why i have so many different types of audio on my channel is because it's not a, it's purely about voice acting it's about just celebrating audio um in a, in a time when there's so much kind of working against that i guess so to me it's it sounds like you're talking about okay my one of my favorite radio shows is radio lab and that's obviously really deep into uh, uh you know the, the writing and the research that they do but you know when you listen to it you're just immersed just got all these little different sound effects going on and you really feel like every little sound effects part of the story and, and because of that you it helps immerse you into that so it sounds like that's really your forte and that's um where you reside yeah Cool. That sounds really cool. Definitely. I'm, well, yeah. now I'm yeah, looking I, forward I, to hearing I this help. podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, now, I haven't heard it. I'm sorry. I should have uh, looked it up. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, what terrible I, host. My myself and uh, and, and the, the other people I work with on the on the other couple projects that I work on, it's this kind of desire to bring radio theater back from the dead, um, but apply modern sensibilities to it um and you're you're already seeing that in the podcasting world you're seeing that with welcome to night vale and uh horror hotel and and things like that um and it's nice to see because there's so much you can experience um purely through a pair of headphones that you, mm. you just won't get from from watching a, a movie or something like that. I love movies. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know what I strive for and, and what people like me strive for is this level of immersion that goes way beyond, you know, s sitting, uh, s sitting in a movie theater. Uh, it's, 
it's all in the audio. It's, you know, there's no visual whatsoever, except for the thumbnail that you're looking at on my channel. <laughs> sure. um, and I like that. It's this kind of sensory deprivation experiment of, of sorts. I, I usually do a, a thumbnail that evokes kind of the imagery that I want from the story that I'm narrating. And then uh, I let the users kind of just sit and stare at that while they listen to the the actual story itself. And um, you know, my my goal is for it to sound because I'm such a movie nut. It has to sound cinematic, and, and so that means lots and lots of sound design, lots of textures, lots of ambience, playing with panning a lot. Um, positioning characters in different kind of uh, in in a different kind of three D space within your binaural hearing field, um, and then adding in music that actually feels and sounds you know cinematic as well with strings and synths and stuff like that. Um, and the takeaway should be hopefully that you feel like you're right there in the story with the characters. So, and then, and then of course the voice acting is first and foremost, what, um, I want people to enjoy and then everything else kind of enhances being there with the characters in the story. Now, if I can achieve that, then that's job done for me. Cause that's how I like to, how I like to roll. So these sound effects really are there to uh, augment the story, their, their storytelling techniques. They are. And I know they're not a popular thing in the, say, like the audiobook world. And yeah. I know they're kind of frowned upon. Um, but I'm not trying to be an audiobook. Um, I'm trying to be something completely different. Um, it's like an enhanced audiobook, of, if anything. Um, but more like a radio play, almost. Um, I, I don't like dry readings of things. I mean, I'd, if someone's got a great voice, great. And if they could put actual emotion into the reading all the better but to me if you add in some extra layers and extra textures and things like that it just kind of it's like the icing on the cake to me so let me let me try um let me try an analogy here so a um hmm let me think here how, how, how am i gonna say it? i have a cute kitten and the cute kitten always always distracts me <laughs> all right. I, hope, I hope you all can hear her I'm I'm thinking of a graphic novel. You know, a graphic novel to you know compared to a novel is, you know, you have this huge visual element that's involved. Um, obviously, along the way, you know, you're not going to write as much text because it's a graphic novel, and you got to, you know, paint all the pictures and everything like that. So it's 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 that interchange between interplay between the text and the visual. Uh, you know, really, that the the panel image, really that comic panel image. So it's almost almost like what you're doing is is a form of that, but obviously it's not visual, it's more sound. You're using, instead of visuals to help tell the story, you're using more, more sound um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in an audiobook. Now I'm wondering, do they produce graphic novels as audiobooks? This is a really weird question. Like I'm wondering, have those Good question. two, two um, medias sort of converged yet? I could easily see that happening on, on an iPad, someone clicking a little comic pain and then the voice actor saying the line in the really intense way you know <laughs> right something like that um hopefully better uh, than what i just did <laughs> oh that was fine uh thank you very much i'll be here all night <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i know they have animated comics um so i i don't know if there's any comics that are pure audio but i but i but i know that they've done something similar to that with these kind of like half animated comics where this, the kind of the cell is coming to life. Things are kind of gliding across and, and, th and stuff like that. And I, I mean, I'm not really up on them. Um, mm -hmm. There actually, there was a really great production uh, way back in 2001, I believe it was called broken saints. And they, they uh, kind of pioneered the whole motion comics genre actually they have this long sprawling <clears throat> uh, episodic story uh, i think it was i can't even remember how many episodes it was like 24 episodes or something cool. and 
and they did they did all of that and it started out just as text on the screen and slightly you know animated characters and stuff like that not full animation but this kind of like they were like kind of layers that would kind of move around and stuff but then they actually went and produced a dvd and they got professional voice actors so that you can enjoy the story not text-based but actually with voice acting and everything and it had sound effects and everything like that so i wouldn't be surprised if you know being a fan of that kind of helped inform what i wanted to do because mm -hmm. i thought because it's very it's not unlike what i do actually um and if you if you're a comic fan or if you like that kind of thing i highly recommend checking out broken saints because it's epic it's so good and it, it it just leaves you in awe by the end and I love, I love, love good story. I, and that's really kind of, um, I think the big motivating factor behind all of this for me <clears throat> is voice acting is a part of the puzzle, but the real joy is in storytelling and enjoying being told stories. Um, there's something really primal about that. And I think that's why so many people will respond to it. It's, um, and so many people want to be a part of it. I think um, I've done. Don't get me wrong. Like I've done a couple of small commercial gigs here and there, but that's not the same thing at all. Um, that's very much an opportunity to kind of get your voice in front of people and get some cash and and stuff like that. And nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's that's awesome. Nope. But that's really. not not my uh, not really my desire so much. It's I'm more interested in the art artistic side of it i think than than the commercial side of it which unfortunately means you don't get paid <laughs> very or if you do you get paid in peanuts well luckily it's apparently your your your, your passion project <laughs> luckily you, you got some bills <laughs> uh, already paid um well you mentioned to me before um, and i think it was before the broadcast began uh that you yourself um are are, are a part of a you know a production team and um you work directly with voice talent um mm -hmm. uh, while yep. producing uh while producing your projects and if i'm not mistaken i think you may you may have mentioned that you have a hand in um hiring uh or or at the very least um you know booking the voice talent for the project and i'm wondering uh if you have maybe any insight uh for folks who are are are, are uh, looking to book a gig like this so i know you do uh, a lot of horror mm. projects and and lots of dramatic things like that um uh are, are those typically the the projects you book you yeah i mean um when I'm kind of working in that role, in that capacity, it's it's for uh, Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. Um, I'm I work alongside the channel owner uh, Craig Groshek, alongside with uh, the other executive producer Jesse Cornett, and uh, you know we handle basically all aspects of the channel, um, not just producing the stories in you know the audio, but also acting in them and then providing and then uh, performing these kind of administrative roles where uh you know people will send in auditions and then we need to vet them or we actually will go out and solicit people uh who we think would be a good fit and um yeah so i mean to speak to that experience um the people who are sending in stuff are often telling scary stories because that's that's our thing the range of quality is huge um it, it has a pretty loyal fan base that channel um we get a lot of people you know the demographic is huge it's it's from like age 12 to like 70. Uh, um i think the core demographic is kind of in their early 20s probably so a lot of them a lot of actual fans will you know when when auditions were open would send in just you know their off the cuff audition because they just really wanted to be a part of things which i think is awesome i mean it's it's nice to feel that kind of sense of community we don't typically select people like that um once upon a time we may have but kind of as the quality of the project overall 
has kind of increased the people that we want to kind of work alongside us uh, have to kind of match that. And so, yeah, we would get a lot of noisy laptop, you know, recordings from their, or from like a Radio Shack mic or something like that, or their head, their video game headset. <clears throat> so you're looking for someone with at least and, uh, a decent sounding recording. Are you looking for like real professional, professional sounding or at least something workable? What, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, bare minimum, you should have the ability to send in something that is clean, that is dry. We don't want effects. We don't want anything, any kind of layering on top of it. We want to hear your natural voice. Um, we, uh, your recording space needs to be quiet. We don't want a whole bunch of background noise or, or, uh, reverb or, you know, uh, acoustics. Um, we need to hear a range of emotion. You don't have to go the full spectrum or anything, but if, you know, typically people will send in them reading a snippet from a story or, or just a very short story. And if you can't kind of emote, that's a problem because you're not going to engage the audience. If you sound too commercial, that's a problem too. Um, some voice actors I know are excellent commercial voice actors. They, they can hit the cadence right. Their intonation is perfect for selling products, but they're awful at being a character because they've never you know, maybe never needed to be a character before. They've they've always been this kind of hyper real salesperson kind of sounding voice. Um, and we don't want anything like that. We want something where <clears throat> the more the raw the more raw the delivery, the better it suited it is for the horror genre. Because you're gonna be screaming and you're gonna be crying and you're going to be horrified and, and you know you need to be able to convey these things if you can't then it's not going to sell what we're trying to do right so yeah so and then from a technical side you know it's got to be high enough quality that it would be something that we mix with so uh, you know i i don't want anything personally just because i'm an audiophile i don't want anything mm -hmm. less than 48 kilohertz and if you're going to send an MP3, it's got to be a 320 bit, and it's and it's got to be or kilobit, sorry, and a, you know, um, constant bit rate, you know, and uh, basically the highest quality that you can send, the better, because that gives me as a producer mm -hmm. um, everything I need to work with. If I'm trying to clean up um, poorly recorded audio, that's a lot of work for me makes me want to kind of skip over you um so that's a that those are kind of like the main things we we look for um and then of course the actual texture and tone of your voice is very important as well uh, if it's if it's just irritable to listen to even if you've got all the other kind of things checked off unfortunately it's oh, just gosh. not gonna work um Bless the heart of so, the actor or actress who spends all the money on the equipment they need and learns how to use the software to remove noise and equalize and compress. Yeah. And yeah. then they just, <laughs> I got an annoying voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you almost sounded heart. like the Crypt Keeper there. That was good. Well, Come no, out, uh, kitty. See, so you, so you do you use voices like that? That sounds pretty cool. Like I dig that. I yeah, I, I mean a little bit. I dabble. You really go for um, it. I'm not really a, like a pure like cartoony kind of yeah. voice actor, but uh, it's fun to try. You know. I think um, you succeed. I but uh, really good. <laughs> yeah, cool. um, yeah. So it's uh, and that is unfortunate, and and one of the, things i'm on a couple of different like facebook pages for voice actors online voice actors and stuff one of the things i see right away that makes me kind of like double take or do kind of cringe a little bit is people who are saying hey guys <clears throat> i want to be a voice actor what do i need 
you know, and that's, those are fine questions to ask, yeah. but it's the people who are like, oh, I went out and I bought this, 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 and this, um, and I've got it all set up and here's my first thing. And I'm just like, like, it took me years to get this, 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 and this, because it started yeah. from just whatever I had in handy. And that's really where you should start. You shouldn't ever go for gear when you're starting out. Um, cause you're going to get, you're going to spend all your time focusing on the gear and not on actually improving yourself. And yeah. if you can't do that, what's the point of having gear? So, you know, yeah. especially when, and, and when you get really experienced and mature with the way you work with a certain mic, for example, and then you step up to a higher grade mic, you're, you're already running out of the gate like you're already ready for that mic but if you mm -hmm. if you don't know how to handle a thousand dollar mic for god's sake do not go out and get one when you're starting out start out with a piece of crap and record and record and record and record and don't share it with anybody listen and listen that's the thing that drives me crazy so many people will just record a one-off performance and then they won't even listen to it they'll just send it off or whatever and wow. and call me a perfectionist but i need to listen to it like 10 times before i'm I, i'm sure that it's what i want to send um because otherwise you're just wasting that. everybody's time I, if you mispronounce something that's like an automatic disqualification for me there's, there's, there are words that are tricky to pronounce because you could say them in a couple of different ways. But if you clearly yeah. stumble on something that is like glaringly wrong and you just leave it in the mix, that's that's a real problem. I don't, I don't, I lose. You instantly lose points with me if that's how you operate. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I just learned that you can do multiple takes. Isn't isn't that incredible? Like, oh my god! You, you could, like, <laughs> if you mess it up, you could say it again. I know. I just learned that. I was it, it blew my mind, and <laughs> it uh, just changed my life. Um, Actually, I have a question for you. Uh, oh, when you do, I'm not ready for this. I'm scared. <laughs> Turn the tables. When you do a recording, I can't breathe. Yes. <laughs> when you do a recording and you screw up, yeah. Um, what's your what's your 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 process there? Do you All usually right, well, do you pause? Do you do a step in? You know, mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, I mean, it's, it's a combination of different things. I, I, what I try to do is I try to read, if I'm reading something, I try to read it. I don't know. I, I call it like the, the three pronged approach. And I try to think of like, you know, my goal and, and I call that like a hundred percent and then I read it at 75%, you know, maybe a little bit less energy, less inflection. And then I read it again at a hundred percent and I'll do it again at 125%, you know? And, um, along the way, I, I don't know about you, but I just can't give it a, a, a top down read. That's a skill of mine that I'd, I'd like to work on, but I stumble along the way a lot, you know, just like uh, in speech. Um, and I think I accidentally, I think I just muted your microphone on accident, but uh, in speech, I stumble a lot and, you know, I, uh, I fumble around my words and uh, I stumble and I say, uh, and, you know, it's just how we, how I talk. Um, and sometimes that peaks out when I do my voice acting and I realize that that's not the perfect take. So for me, um, I'm, I'm stopping a lot, but then, then I try to have to, I have to find that spot, you know, earlier in the phrase or earlier in the sentence where I can restart again, where I can restart again, you know what I mean? And try to re say mm -hmm. the, the phrase and hopefully I can edit it back in. Sometimes I could do that with the combination of those, you know, those three different takes, the 7,500% and 125%. Sometimes I'm not mm -hmm. so lucky and I got to get back in and give it another read. Um, yeah. And that's the part I hate. I don't know. Me. That's me. That's me. I, I, I'm thinking there are pros out there who have found a way around that. But, you know, for me, I'm doing all the editing myself. I, um, you know, I, I, I wonder how others do it. <laughs> well, I mean, I can speak to that, at least in my own experience, and I'm exactly the same way. Um, cool. I, I wish to God that I could do a reading top to bottom with no mistakes, but I don't know what happens, you know. Um, and it, sometimes it's stumbling on a word, but I have this thing where while I'm reading, I'm in this like beautiful equilibrium, but then I start to realize I am. And then I start to like my, my brain and my voice start to lose that connection. 
and yeah. I ended up kind of reading faster than I mean, mean to speak. And then I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to kind of anticipate what I'm going to say and it all just goes off the rails. Like I just, yeah. like, it's like, I forget how to read for a second <laughs> and then I have to like regroup, do it again. And then the worst is when you get stuck in these situations where whatever's in the script is written in such a way, I don't, either it's got lots of syllables or mm-hmm. the, the combination of the words is something you've never said before or, or feel like is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And then you get stuck in this like never ending loop of like, oh my God, I'm on my third 30th take of saying this stupid sentence because I cannot get the words out of my mouth correctly. <laughs> Any sentence with the word products. I can't say that. Who oh, invented God. that word? Like, the, <laughs> and, then the t- and then this, like, oh, come on. Exactly. Um, yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel really similarly. Um, in that in that in that way i i mean i i have friends who do the the whole step in technique where you kind of go back two seconds and then roll in and and do your next take and things like that i'm more of a i like to just keep the take rolling and and just regroup and then you know do a clap or something so i have a nice spike in the audio yeah yeah, I and, snap. Wow, that's funny yeah. that you do that. I just thought of it. I, I, I always wonder these little tricks. Like, <laughs> I can't be the only one thinking of stuff like I, that. I cribbed that from somebody else. Um, and I was like, oh, of course, that makes total sense. You see one giant spike in the audio file yeah. and you have a clear edit. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and I just keep it rolling. And it could take me an hour and a half to do the full thing when yeah, it's, you know, edited down. It's a 20 minute production because um, I got stuck. And it's like, and sometimes I even just walk away from the computer and like go get a drink and stuff and let it keep yeah. rolling because it's all digital. It's not like it matters. Um, yeah. yeah. But the the thing I hate is when you when you, you're looking back at your material and unfortunately, like you said, your three prong approach fails and now you actually have to go and re-record something. Um, that's, that's the most the worst. nerve-wracking. Yeah, you got to especially get if it's not the same right. day. Oh, yeah, if it's not the same day, you can hear the difference. It's like I don't like there. There's just a bit more um, moisture in your voice, or you're not as yeah. tired, or or it's like, or it's like I find when I go back and record new dialogue, my voice is like an octave lower. <laughs> it feels like it's like I don't understand. I how how does my voice vary from day to day? But I mean, even today, I can feel it. Right. Like I feel it's a little, I feel like I'm almost on the verge of losing it. Whereas I have other days where it's like Barry Manilow, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's fun to just record in the morning. Cause I don't know about oh, you, yeah. but you get that first cup of coffee and you're talking real low. Oh know? my gosh. Yeah. All right. When, yeah. Before I'm like warmed up, I'm, I'm just grovelly all down there. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, you mentioned you're a musician and I, you know, I'm a musician too. And I think as a musician, that's what gets me as I'm doing a take as I'm reading a, a a line or a paragraph or whatever, I I just hear it. And you know, when you sing or when you play music, you you hear it when you do it, and you go, okay, that was good or that wasn't good. And here are all the ways in which I want it to be better, or here are all the ways in which mm-hmm. it couldn't be better. You know, so, for me, it's usually how it could be better. But um, you know, it, it, I found that as I'm you know gaining more experience and getting more comfortable with voiceovers and getting in front of the mic and voicing. I find that I'm doing the same thing. I'm listening and I'm, I'm like hearing it and I'm thinking I, that one word could have been said so much differently. Yes. Now. And I'm oh, like, yes. now I can't help but do it again a billion times. And sometimes you, you have an idea of how you want it to sound, but you know, the, the voice you is a make flexible yourself thing. Think. Yeah. yeah sometimes yeah. it takes a minute to get there. So I don't know In- that sometimes that's what I do. And I'll say the same yeah. pair of words 19 times. And then finally that 19th time I'll get it. And I will oh, yeah. get lucky sometimes and I'll be able to edit it in without, without too much of a, of a fuss, but you know, can't, can't win them all the time. No, I, I hear you. Uh, intonation, especially when you're not clear what the script is calling for, you know, a yeah. lot of the times, I mean, I'm not reading a script. I'm reading an actual full short story. So it's, it's not always easy to know what the author, the intention of the character uh, tone is supposed to be in, in a given sentence. So it's like, what do you think he said? What do you think he said? What do you think he said? 
what do you think he said? It's like, <laughs> you just try it all. <laughs> yeah, you got to play around. It's, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's art, you know, it's art with with art, with good art, any good art, you know, you got to experiment before you get it right. You know, if you get it right, the well, first and I think, time, I think a how really, much skill does that, re- uh, does that require? I agreed. Um, and I think a really, really, really important skill to develop doing any of this is the ability to listen and not, not just gloss over, but really do a deep dive and listen very carefully right down to the texture of your voice. Is it okay? Are you pronouncing things correctly? Um, Are you emoting correctly? You know, um, you know, and, and listen multiple times and listen to other people and hear what they do. I mean, Mm -hmm. just like with anything else, you'll get your, you'll get your inspiration by listening to other people do it. And when you're first starting out, that's the best way to do it is you listen to what other people have done and see if you want to emulate that or if you just want to kind of use it as inspiration or something like that. But um, to just kind of like shoot off into the into the space, do, trying it without ever having like listened to what, what other people are doing um, is noble, <laughs> but I wouldn't advise it. You know, you're always best to see kind of, see why it works for the pros. What are they doing? listen very carefully to how they're doing it and use that to inform what you decide to do. And you can throw it all out the window, but at least you've got that kind of muscle memory that you can, you know, that that exists, you know, that there's a way that people do a certain, certain things. If you don't know that stuff at all, it's like with, I, I hear that about writing too. Like if you want to write a good story, you need to read like, you know, five times as much as you ever write. Because how will you ever know what good writing is if you don't read good writing? And I think it's the same thing with voice acting, same thing with music. Yeah. And do it lots. That's the other thing. Just lots and lots and lots. Well, Jeff, um, I'm I'm thinking about um this little interview we we've had here, uh the time that I've spent with you today, and it's it's just been a blast. Um I've uh, I've learned a lot about um how you do things. And I, I love how you do things differently than, uh, than other folks. I know I have spoken with uh, a handful of full-time voiceovers and uh, I think it's really cool to get uh, a different perspective in terms of someone who uh, does voiceover uh, on the side, as you call it, a passion project. Um, you're also a producer. So you see that side of things and it's been really cool talking to you about that. Um, I wonder if you have any any other tips, uh, maybe for the voiceover community, for people who are uh, uh, just getting into voiceovers, or uh, folks who maybe are thinking about even even audio production, that side of things. Um, mm. uh, any, any 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 other lasting ideas for folks like that? Sure. Well, in my opinion, and not just because I do it, but in my opinion. Um, it's very short sighted to put all your eggs in the, in the voiceover basket. Um, if that's the thing that drives you and makes you passionate, by all means do that. But you should always be striving to figure out a better way to do it. Um, I'm a huge proponent of uh, streamlining your workflow. So the very first time you start doing this stuff, you're high, you're, you're really not going to have any real clue as to how to approach it. You're going to sit down and start recording and, and try your best. And when you're just starting out, that's exactly what you should be doing. You should never be aiming for some pie in the sky end result because it gets really daunting approaching things that way. But <clears throat> as you go and you get comfortable with your gear, you get comfortable with the act of recording and the act of um, editing and things like that. You should be really striving to figure out ways that you can do all of that stuff, but faster and better. And I, I'm, I see a lot of amateur voice actors who just never improve in that aspect. They're, they're only focused on 
doing the best they can with her voice and handing it off. And I think you're really selling yourself short when you do that, um, because you could actually you could actually do something that sounds quite a bit better uh, if you if you know kind of how to enhance it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a lot of people start out with cheap software uh, for recording. I mean, one of the most popular pieces of software I see okay. is is audacity and it is a capable product yeah. sure you can you can set it up and you can record and there you go but it's really bare bones really bare bones um and it's really mostly geared for, for editing individual audio files it supports multi-tracking but it's a nightmare mm. so when you're just starting out again it's a fine piece of software because you're getting your feet wet with the actual act of doing things like manipulating wave files and understanding peaks and valleys and normalizing your voice and things like that but um when it comes to the editing side of things uh you you know it's it's important to investigate uh that you know different options that are out there to kind of make your life a little easier and uh you know one of the things that drives me absolutely bonkers <clears throat> is watching voice actors do things like apply equalization or compression and limiting and things like that to their their raw source recording and then saving over top of it and and now they're stuck they're stuck with whatever they did to it they might have blown out all the dynamics and it sounds it's clipping and now they can never save it again because they just went and processed that. So, you know, even and I see that even with professional grade software like um, like Adobe Audition, when it when right there in the, that very program, it, it supports the ability for you to do uh, multi track authoring and overlay your plugins and effects and things like that on top of your um your recording in a non-destructive way yeah non-destructive that you can template yeah and undestructed if you screw it up right and um and then you can template that and say for all my recordings i'm going to use this equalization and this compression level cuz that's perfect for my voice and my microphone and everything like that and it sounds great and the client loves it and then you can actually just start a brand new recording load in your template hit record and you're good to go rather than setting that up or doing it in post you know from scratch every time and it drives me absolutely it makes me want to rip my hair out when i watch people work like that because it's like you could have saved yourself like 50 hours of work <laughs> if you would have just followed a template and so and i because i'm a producer um i'm always thinking about how it's going to work in the final mix and so i actually record right into my DAW, my digital audio workstation, as opposed to using something like Audition um, because it supports direct recording. And then I've already got my tracks ready to go for when I can drop in other characters and music and stuff like that. Do you mind and, what uh, I, and the I editing is for multi-tracking? Sure, yeah. I use Kakos Reaper. And um, all right. It's that's a second recommendation amazing. I've gotten for that. Highly recommend, especially if you're if you're a voice actor like me and you just do not have two grand for Cubase. <laughs> uh, no way. It's you know for a private version where you make uh, they have these different kind of license levels, but there's like a there's like a, a version where if you basically make under twenty thousand dollars a year or something like that, they advise that you buy the a certain version, a private version. And the private version, sixty bucks, and and you're not. It's not like you're not buying like Norton Antivirus, where it's clearly like an overpriced piece of crap. Your Reaper is a full fledged <laughs> professional grade uh, DAW. It, it will compete easily with Cubase and Pro Tools and Logic. It's not as user friendly, so it doesn't hand things to you uh, as much as those programs do but if you can get kind of under if you can kind of get into the groove of how it works it's got to so learn some tricks powerful 
definitely and and, and you, like if you're not like they're like an iceberg just learn the tip of the iceberg you'll be fine exactly and not only that if you're not sitting down and learning and teaching yourself in your free time you're selling yourself short it's as simple as that whether it's how different techniques for voice acting or whether it's the, from the production side for fun you should be spending time learning this stuff um or, or you're never going to improve so you know how did i how do i get the proper you know i was talking about having that template where you've got equalization and compression and limiting stuff like that mm -hmm. figure out how to do that get if you if reaper is the tool that you decide you want to use how are you going to do that in reaper and what plugins are you going to use are you going to use are you going to purchase plugins or are you going to use the stock out of the out of the box stuff which is great too how are you going to get that all set up so that you can just go and click record and you're good to go um and if you're not taking the time to to teach yourself that then you're you're going to miss out on all kinds of stuff and uh so that's what i use i use reaper and i love it it's i use it for my music i use it for my voice acting i use it for my sound mixing and sound design it does everything I you gotta... and you really can't go wrong as a amateur or semi-pro or even a pro voice actor to use something like reaper uh, i prefer it over audition because it's a lot more flexible really? so and it, it yeah i mean it's all the stuff that you could do in audition you can do the exact same stuff in reaper there you go i um oh. i gotta get i gotta give a little shout out here right now to uh Actually, the first interview that I did for the for the hashtag VO podcast, it was Ken Therio. Ken Ken also mentioned that uh, that he uses Reaper and he uh, he described it in, in much the same way that you did. Very very high very high marks. I've grown accustomed to an audition, so the idea of switching is is daunting. But you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll make the switch. Yeah. Well, I'd say from a production side of things, you, you wouldn't want to do. I personally would not want to do a full production inside of audition. Yeah, audition is very geared towards. No, it's not really Garage designed Band for that. Better. Yeah, I mean, GarageBand is a is a capable DAW. It really is, and it's free yeah, it's if you buy a Mac. Bad. So, yeah. um, and it's got you know basically any kind of piece of software where you can have multi track. You can play with your panning and your setting, your volume sliders, yeah. and add in plugins that sit on top of your, uh, sit on the track and not inside the actual uh, recording and things like that. But I mean, like, I'm giving full marks to Reaper. I'm working on a production yeah. right now for Chilling Tales for Dark Nights where it, it's a short story being read by Daniel Radcliffe. And my job is to add in the music and sound effects and and also record an introduction for it. So, you know, wow. I'm not saying I'm, you know, Mr. Top Producer or anything like that, but it's the it's that good quality of a product yeah. that I, I'm I'm confident that it's gonna sound good when I'm finished. Well, that sounds really cool. I totally just name dropped, and I'm sorry. Yeah, but... no, you, you waited. You waited till the end of the episode. Wait. Um, I am. I am pretty excited about that. No, actually. that sounds really cool. Honestly, um, you know, I, 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 I almost wish I could spend about thirty more minutes with you talking more about, about, um, about audio production, and maybe there might be a day when I call you back and have you talk to us about this. Um, but I wonder, um, you know. It, you you mentioned you know learn voice actors learning how to use the software not just sending out their auditions uh, straight out of the microphone you know mm -hmm. learning how to uh, uh, edit the file in a non destructive way uh, oh mm -hmm. man I I guess what I want to do is ask you about a billion questions but really my question is how how do you make me do it can you can you get me to do it right I I want you to tweak uh, all all the right uh, digital knobs that I have over here make <laughs> make my voice sound incredible um, but uh, but really your 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 big your, the big tip if I'm pulling this correctly if I'm reading this correctly listening to you correctly rather is that you you really strongly suggest uh, editing your file in a non destructive way absolutely because then you can return to it you can that source file it can have all the mistakes you want it can have it can be 2 hours 
hours long. It can be this epic thing that could take you, you know, forever to, to actually sit down and record. And it just stays right there. And you will never, ever F with that. And all you will do is you will take it and you'll snip it up, which is why, again, I suggest something like Reaper as opposed to Audition, because it's ridiculously easy to make an edit. You slice the, the audio hot file into different parts, and mm -hmm. then it's got excellent crossfading, which can actually hide those edits very, very nicely. Yeah. You can drag the crossfader left and right. You can overlay tracks on top of each other and suddenly you've just caught you could have had like half an hour of you effing around and, and screwing everything up and you just snip that and in like one second you're back on track and it's like nothing ever happened and, and people <laughs> people ask us like because we do live streams on the on chilling tales for dark nights all the time wow. and we have this um We've had this uncanny ability to not screw up too much live, which is just insane, especially considering I'm half, you know, three sheets of the wind half the time doing it. But uh, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> well, I, I do screw up, but um, I try to at least cover my tracks. But uh, the um, basically, like, uh, you're never going to get it all right in one go. And, and pe you know, people often comment when they listen to our productions about how perfect they are, how y your voice actors are so good. They never, you know, all their pacing is perfect and they, they never mess up their lines and stuff like that because, like, they assume that we just record it and walk away, I guess. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, a lot of people don't even understand what production is or what goes into it. And that's actually being a producer i get really um defensive about being a producer because you know when you when you do an audio production you've got a star you've got a, an actor who is reading the story or or being a character or multiple characters and they say oh great oh your voice is so good you know you you're you really put me in the in the in the mood and all that stuff <laughs> meanwhile you know a guy like me has spent mm, easily 10 times as much time on the project producing it like they I, I okay i'm gonna name drop some uh, a good buddy of mine his name's otis gyri and he's a he's a really good uh voice actor professional um and uh he runs his own his own channel and everything like that but he's also part of our cast and uh he, you know he's super streamlined he go he'll go in and he'll make very few errors and he'll do the editing himself and and clean up the audio and remove the clicks and everything like that but his turnaround time is like you know for a 30 minute production he spent a total of maybe two hours on it and then he sends it uh, off to me and of course and it's he perfect because he's been doing this forever okay maybe not 30. i'm, I'm getting my ratios wrong here say it's a 15 minute okay. production he spent two to three yeah. hours getting it that's right that's pretty yeah. good and from where yeah, i'm sitting that's good. awesome he, yeah and he does that a lot so obviously he's gotten very streamlined at it he knows exactly what works for him um and uh so then it'll hand it to me but because of the way that i do productions i don't just toss like a, a tiny little you know loop in the background of music and then render it i do depending on the production i did a production with um it starred four it had four actors in it but i made the decision because it sounded like such a cinematic story it was very dramatic um that i was going to go full-on sound design like literally every footstep she takes you're going to hear it just as a more of a of a thing to see if I could pull it off, yeah. but the end result, and then and then of course scoring it and and using like orchestral samples and things like that and trying to make it sound really like legit, like a movie, and um, it, it took me it took me a month and a half <laughs> to, oh to make it. Gosh. Now of course there's no cons there's absolutely no limits you know when you're doing this as a passion right like you could just work on the same thing forever 
yeah. which is uh, it's good. It's good to have limitations. Let's just say. Mm. But on this one, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It just uh, and I wasn't. I'm not saying I worked on it for a month and a half every single night straight, but uh, you know, I'd say probably over a hundred hours of work went wow. into that from the production side, and uh, the voice actors turned around their stuff in you know within a couple of days. So <laughs> I had all the core or material from them and it was just like i because i started from like okay here's scene one she walks into the room okay i gotta go find find some footstep sound effects and like it's just this long long different long. footsteps yeah from the last part. oh yeah it's got yeah it's got to sound natural right so wow. so yeah it's uh it's insane and i and really like not advisable because um <laughs> you turn into a psychotic hermit but um the end result sounded good. Yeah, it's just, well, it just sounds um, like it's just like a painting. You can just keep throwing more paint on. Oh, you cooler, absolutely cooler. can, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, but all I'm trying to say is, I get I get a little defensive because people always tout about how great the voice <laughs> actors are, and they never say anything about the sound effects or the music. <laughs> I think that's that's sort of like just a state of the media in general. I mean, well, I think yeah. music. I mean, we it, keep going back to music, but like music, like tons of pop musicians are popular, but really. You know, they're only somewhat talented. It's the folks behind the, you know, the board, the folks writing the music. Like, they are really the talented ones. Oh, and absolutely. And the pop stars are just the ones just singing the song. Um, yeah, I, I was actually thinking about that a lot today, so I'm, I'm glad you talked about that. Yeah, so today you've helped me uh, gain an appreciation for, you know, uh, producers of uh, of the uh, the audio art, and so I think that's that's been really cool. I think you've, you've dropped tons whether or not you you know what you've dropped lots of little bombs uh, of little vo tips hashtag vo tips which i'm gonna go ahead and transcribe and share through the the twitter stream through the hashtag vo podcast um and uh yeah and uh people will be able to find the podcast and listen back to our little conversation that we've had today frankly i've, I've learned a lot i always like to talk to new people uh, especially when they um, approach v the voiceover world in a different way uh, than 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 folks that I've talked to in the past. So in that sense, it's been just a pleasure for me, Jeff, to have you on the show. So I want to thank you once again. So thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Oh, it was my pleasure. I mean, you know, uh, any chance I get to, to to geek out about this kind of stuff with like-minded people is, is is a good one because it's a very it can be a very isolating job. Uh, do, yeah. doing this so when you actually have friends who, who do it and uh and know what you're, the heck you're talking about it's uh it doesn't feel so lonely i i completely <laughs> agree with that um from for a person like me i'm just trying to dip my toes into the voiceover world i'm just getting going here a little bit you know i'm a little bit alone i'm just sort of sitting in my room talking surrounded by blankets up on the walls you know it feels lonely but um i, I would say that uh, for folks in a position like me uh, who are looking to uh, try a new career uh, in voiceover, get on Twitter, get out there and start communicating people, start connecting with people. Uh, I've found, as you can tell right now, I'm talking to Jeff Clement, an awesome guy. People are willing to spend their time. People are willing to give their time to you. And uh, it's just so selfless and just just so wonderful to see uh, at, at this time when when the world sometimes does uh, some crazy things. So it, it's just w uh, wonderful to, to see these uh, these things happen. And, and, and I feel very fortunate. And I'm again, I'm very, very happy and, and thankful that uh, I got to talk to you today, Jeff. So um, uh, I guess, and I guess. Can yeah. I just interject one one thing? I just wanted to, please. Um, just because you, you, you pee my my thought process there mm -hmm. uh connecting and, and and networking and stuff yeah i completely agree with that and the, it can have these benefits that you don't even know are there too so just mm. i'll just drop one last example and then you can kick me off but um <laughs> because i do i read short stories i need material and there is there's a lot of like royalty free stuff out there that you can find um, but I, my, I've changed my strategy. Um, to me, it's more important to connect directly with authors, for example. Um, so I actually have took to Twitter and I said, I tried a couple of different hashtags and I said, hey, writers, 
uh, are you interested in having a free audio production of your short story? You know, it can only, you know, this is the word limit, et cetera, et cetera. And then mm. they get to own the production for themselves that they can use for their own promotional purposes at with the agreement that I can host it on my YouTube channel. Mm. And, uh, and I had some, some pretty decent responses, which was really cool. So it, g- it gave me a decent backlog of material to use from my YouTube channel. I just did one by author MJ Pack called Soft White Dam, which is a story that she wrote. It's the first part of a multi-part horror series. And it's about a 15 minute long thing. And I just really enjoyed the story and I thought she was a good writer. And so I went ahead and made it. What I didn't realize is she's a writer for Thought Catalog, which is this huge blog. And she she heads up the um, the creepy catalog side of it, which is uh, the horror side of, of thought catalog. And she said, Oh, I'll, you know, I'll help promote your, your, uh, rendition of my story on our Facebook page. And I went and checked out the Facebook page for creepy catalog. There's 1.2 million fans on there. Oh my God. And my video went up in front of all of them. And then she gave me a plug the other day just because she really enjoyed my work. Nice. So, suddenly I'm getting exposed to an audience that never knew I existed and is huge. (laughs) Um, And I'm, you know, I'm not saying like suddenly I've got 10 million subscribers, but it certainly has helped, you know, like I'm getting a lot more people showing up on my Facebook page and subscribing to my channel and emailing me and things like that. I don't know what that necessarily does for me professionally, but that Mm -hmm. kind of buzz really keeps the juices going and makes you want to keep working harder so uh and i and you never know until you actually get out and reach out and connect with those kind of those kinds of people and and in in my case it worked out to uh to connect directly with the authors the the people who write the source material that i do my productions from so i'm gonna keep doing that if if uh if that's the kind of awesome experience i get to have then i'm gonna i'm gonna keep doing that and i'd suggest that, that anybody in the voiceover world um, you know, talk to, to different types of people, talk to authors, talk to actors, talk to musicians, because everybody wants to, to a lot of, a lot of people are really w- willing to kind of work together and, and just do stuff because it's fun for the, for the love of it. And, mm-hmm. and you can get a lot of really great stuff done just with goodwill. So, you know, I highly recommend if you're starting out then that's, that's a good way to, to go. And don't, don't just like sell yourself, just, you know, start an actual conversation and get to know them as people because amazing things can come from that. So that's well, my last little tidbit. There you go. I, I know we talked about that uh, actually before the broadcast. So I'm really happy that you brought that up again. Um, that's an awesome point. And, uh, uh, and, and um, if, if you only said one thing during this whole podcast today, it, it would be worth it. And, and, and it is, you know, if you, if you want to do audio books, it's a great idea to just reach out to authors and that's just um, a stellar point. So thank you again for bringing that up. Um, Jeff, I'm going to go ahead and end the podcast now. I know we'll have to wipe away our tears, but um, <laughs> it's it's sort of that time. Uh, we've spent a lot of time with you and uh, I'm sure folks listening uh, who are in a similar position like me, they're looking to learn more about the voiceover world. They're looking to learn some lessons along the way that perhaps you wouldn't learn without conversing with other voiceover talent. Um, I'm sure there's some folks uh, like me out there who could benefit from uh, uh, these conversations. So once again, thank you, Jeff, for being here today. Um, I wish you, thank you. I wish you all the best of luck um, out in Van, excuse me, out in Ontario. I want to send Vancouver out in Ontario, Canada, the, the land of, of Saris. We also like to call Canada America's hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's such uh, a nice hat. It's it, Honestly, it's a really good hat. It's better than the best fedora. Um, <laughs> it, it's warm. I, I will give you that. It's cozy and it fits perfectly. But uh, yeah, thank you again for being here, Jeff. Um, I'm really looking forward for to... to uh, honestly, I feel badly that I haven't checked out your podcast yet. I'm looking forward to check out um, both of uh, your YouTube channels, the uh, oral stimulation YouTube channel. That's your personal channel. And then also you have the, uh, the YouTube channel chilling tales for dark nights. That sounds really exciting, really cool project. And the other project that you do 
is also uh, it's called uh, uh, the No Sleep Podcast, which is uh, that's sort of the collaboration with the let the Reddit community. And I'm a Reddit nerd that's myself, right. so that's really cool. I like hearing I like hearing about that. Um, my man, best of luck to you in the world. I hope uh, hope you're able to keep paying the bills, uh, rocking out the web development. Um, I think that's really cool how you've well, hopefully able- hopefully I can uh, keep paying the bills doing this instead, yeah. but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> right. I mean, I like how you got a goal. You you got your paying job, and you're you're doing a good job doing that, and then you have your passion. And and it really seems yeah. like you're you're on that right road, and, and and I'm hoping and I'm thinking that you'll have uh, some some awesome success. Obviously, uh, tons and tons of people are tuning into this podcast, so your name is getting out out there right now. People are talking about you around the water cooler. It's 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 all Jeff, 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 Jeff. Did you hear about Jeff? <laughs> Jeff is on the VO podcast. Oh my God, Jeff. So um, <laughs> thank you again. It's been awesome. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know stop the broadcast, and we'll be able to chat a little bit after that. Jeff, thank you again. We'll uh, thank, we'll be seeing you around you. on the internet, and maybe maybe one day in person. <laughs> oh yes, at Ooh. at, uh, at VO Podcast Con. There you go. Yes, I'm hosting <laughs> the convention. It's all about me and the VO Podcast. Come on, <laughs> see it, guys. It's in my apartment tonight, starting right now. All right, uh, Jeff, have a wonderful night. Everyone who's listening, I hope you also have a wonderful night. Um, and, um, you know, just enjoy life. Be good to each other. Uh, and uh, I guess that's what it's all about. Awesome. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Peace now.